This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hi there, everyone. This video is going to be a bit of a double header. Firstly, we're going to be taking a look at a new series of motors that's just been launched by T Motor, these T Motor Velox 2808, 3008, and 2812 motors. And secondly, we're going to be looking at some really fundamental aspects of motor performance that I hope will be really interesting and educational for all of you who are looking to match a particular motor to a particular prop or who are looking to size a particular motor for a certain type of build. It's a lot to cover, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. So let's start by looking at the motors. So this is the Velox 2808, and I'm gonna take you through the key things that I noticed when I looked over this motor. So we'll start with the base. This is obviously the standard 19 by 19 millimeter M3 pattern for motors of this size, and it's got an 11 millimeter bearing, and the shaft through the motor is a four millimeter thick shaft. The magnets have a really nice tight air gap with the windings, and they're also close together. You can see there's not much space between the magnets around this bell. So that's really good for efficiency and performance. The bell is a two-piece design. We've got an aluminium part at the top and then a ferrous part here, which is the flux ring, which helps contain the magnetic force within inside the motor. It's a standard five millimeter shaft. And this motor is really designed for seven or eight inch props. It's available in three different KVs, 1300, 1500, and 1950 KV. And I would say 1300 is a standard KV for seven to eight inch props. 1500 would be for lighter pitch seven inch props. And then the 1950 KV is more for five or six inch cine whoops, that type of thing. If we come onto the 3008, a lot of things are very similar. So we have the same mounting, the same bearing, the same shaft thickness. The bell is the same and the magnets are slightly bigger on this 30 millimeter diameter motor than on the 2808. This 3008 is available in either 1155 kV, 1350 kV or 1500 kV. With 1155 being more suitable for eight or nine inch props, 1350 kV being pretty ideal for seven to eight inch props and 1500 kV again being for more lighter pitch seven inch props or higher speed applications as well. And the final motor we have is this 2812. This is a really quite a big motor. Again, all the key features very similar to the other motors. It's got the same size bearing, the same shaft, the same mounting, the same bell construction and design. It's got the same width magnets as the 2808, but of course they're four millimeters taller. And this motor is available in 925 kV or 1155 kV as well. So these are lower kVs, so it's, it's targeting a larger prop diameter, maybe eight or nine inch in size. All right, so now that we've looked at the motors, let's take a look at the test results and talk a bit about how these motors differ because of their different kV and different size. Before I jump into the test data, I want to explain a bit about this graph that I'm going to show you. Now this graph is going to have torque on the y-axis, the torque produced by the motor, and RPM on the x-axis. And if we look at the torque versus RPM curve for a prop, you can see that at zero RPMs, the prop requires no torque, and that as you increase the RPMs, the prop requires more and more torque. Now, the difference between a light prop and a heavy prop is in how quickly that torque requirement increases with RPM. If we look at the motor curves now, you can see that for a typical motor, we have different throttle positions, increasing throttle. So let's say this is 50% throttle, 70%, 90%, and 100% throttle, for example. At low RPMs, the motor will produce more torque and then as the RPMs increase, the amount of torque that the motor can produce drops down. So when we're looking at a particular prop and motor combination, we're looking at where these two lines intersect. And we can see that a light prop intersects here at a higher RPM and a heavy prop. And that as you reduce the motor throttle, you're going to see less RPM on the prop. 
If we now jump into the test data, I've got five different motors here, the three T motors that we've looked at, and also a couple of smaller motors by iFlight just for comparison. And we can see the shape of these torque versus RPM curves is very different for all of the motors that we've tested. Let's start with the 2812 you can see that it's by far the biggest motor here, the biggest volume. So it produces the most torque at low RPMs. And you can see that on this really heavy 7.5 by 4.6 by 3 prop, it produces massive amounts of torque. But you can also see that because it has quite a low KV, 1107 KV as tested, that torque reduces very quickly as the RPMs increase. And at higher RPMs, it produces a lot less torque than much smaller motors. So that's something to be aware of. If you're going to be trying to achieve a high motor RPM because you're looking for high top speed, you need to pick a motor that has a high enough KV. If we look at the 2808, this has, I think, a really nice middle of the road kind of torque curve. It produces really good torque on a heavier prop like this 7.5 by 4.6 by 3. But even on this 7.5 by 3.6, it's still producing uh, quite a good amount of torque and it's still definitely got some, some room to go up to even higher RPMs if the prop deloads as you accelerate, 1255 kV as tested. The 3008 motor actually came in a bit higher on kV than it was reported at. So it was a 1350 kV motor that tested out at 1380 kV. And you can see that it has a really flat curve. So even as we're getting to higher and higher RPMs, we're not dropping off in torque very much. So this looks great. What's the trade-off if you have this kind of very flat torque curve is that the efficiency of the motor is not so good. So you can see efficiency here of 2.29, 2.34 compared to 2.6, for the 2808 at a lower KV and 2.9 or 2.98 for that 2812. So a lower KV motor is going to be more efficient, but a higher KV motor is going to give you more top end. How does motor size matter on these curves? Well, if we go to a much smaller motor like this 2806 from iFlight 2806.5, it's got a very, very similar KV to the 2808 but you can see that it produces a lot less torque over the whole range, but that it's dropping off at a similar sort of rate, and we would expect it to hit zero torque at about the same place as the 2808 because it's got the same KV. A really interesting comparison to make is the same motor with two different KVs. So here we have the Velox 2808, the 1300 KV variant, which tested at 1255, and the 1500 kV variant, which tested at 1467. The lower kV motor produces more torque at lower RPMs with a higher efficiency. This number here is the efficiency in grams per watt. But the torque falls off more quickly at higher RPMs. The higher kV variant is less efficient, about 15% less efficient. It produces more torque at high RPMs but critically less torque at low RPMs, which is going to affect responsiveness. In general, I tend to recommend and prefer lower KV motors because they have better efficiency. They're more tolerant of larger props because they produce more torque at lower RPMs. And unless you really need that top end power, unless you're going to be spending a lot of time at very high throttle, you're not really going to notice or benefit from the extra top end of a higher KV motor. One of the really interesting uses of a low and high KV variant of the same motor is in a counter-rotating prop configuration where you put the high KV motor on the bottom. Make sure you're subscribed because I'm planning to do some testing with that on my new thrust stand and sin lifter very, very soon. So subscribe and hit that notification bell if you don't want to miss that. The second factor to consider is the responsiveness of the motor. For sin lifter applications or for any quadcopter application, we want a motor that can change speed really, really quickly, change its thrust really, really quickly to keep the quad stable in the air. We can see here that the 2812 does a fantastic job 
of being responsive. It's very, very fast to accelerate and very fast to brake as well. And that's to be expected when you have a very tall motor. It's got a lot of torque because it's got a lot of volume. And because it's quite a, a narrow motor, it's not got much moment of inertia. The 2808 also does really well, both under acceleration and braking. But the 3008 is quite a bit slower actually to accelerate and a bit slower to brake on average than the 2808. If we look at the two motors side by side, you can sort of see why that might be. The 3008 is a slightly wider motor, but it's exactly the same height as the 2808. So you have not that much more motor volume, but you have the weight of the motor moved a little bit further outwards. And that means that there's just more moment of inertia there. You've got, a, you've got mass further out that you have to try and accelerate, but you've not got that much more torque to do it. So the 3008 is a little bit slower to accelerate and slower to brake as a result. The final thing to think about is the weight of the motor. And weight of motors is particularly important because they are out on the ends of the arm. So they contribute a lot to the moment of inertia of the whole quad and therefore its responsiveness on pitch and roll. And they also contribute to the vibration of the quad because the heavier the motor is, out on the end of that springy arm, the lower the frequencies of vibration are going to be that get transmitted through the frame and can cause jello and oscillations. And low frequency vibrations are much worse than higher frequency ones for that. There's quite a big difference in the weight between these three motors. The 2808 coming in at 61 grams, the 3008 about 10% heavier at 70 grams, and the 2812 really quite a bit heavier again at 78 grams. So you're going to want to consider the weight of the motor when choosing what motor is right for your particular build. And that brings us to the conclusions and recommendations part of the video. And let's start with this 2808 motor. Now, the 1300 kV variant is a fantastically versatile synlifter motor. It's going to be able to handle the vast majority of typical synlifter props like this 7x4x3 or this 8x4x3. And it's got plenty of torque, it's very responsive, and it's still got quite a good top end as well. The 1500 kV variant is a little bit more niche. It's got a lot less torque than the 1300 kV variant at low RPMs. It's not going to be as responsive as a result, and it's going to struggle with heavier props like, you know, eight inch props. So you're going to want to run a light pitch prop on it, and it's going to be better suited for a type of rig where you're always going to be very high in the throttle and you're going to be benefiting from the extra performance that that extra kV gives you. If we come on to the 3008, this is again, I see it as a little bit more of a kind of specific motor for a specific application. It's got about the same torque as the 2808, but more top end because the kV tests out quite a bit higher. So if you're looking at that 2808, 1300 kV, you're flying something similar and you just want a bit more performance than that, then this motor will give you a little bit more performance, but is able to cope with the same range of props. So again, it's that 7x4x3 and the 8x4x3. Similar to the 2808, I'm, I'm preferring the 1350 kV option because it's much more versatile. The 1500 kV is really going to need you to match it to a lighter prop. And again, you'll need to be high in the throttle if you're going to see the benefit of that extra performance. Coming on to the 2812, now this is a big motor and it's got a lower kV as well. So it's really suited for much heavier props. So you're going to be wanting to pair it with something like this. This is the 7.5 by 4.6 from T-Motor. It's a massive prop with a massive cord um, and it's designed to produce a lot of thrust. So you're going to want to pair it with something like this or maybe a, a heavy eight or nine inch prop. It's really not going to perform very well on typical Synlifter props like 7x4x3, 8x4x3. The KV is too low. It's... It, it's got so much torque, but it's not got the KV to drive those props to the higher RPMs. I hope you found those conclusions and recommendations useful. Now to hear a little bit more about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. 
Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who wants to invest in improving their skills. There are classes on a whole range of different topics, whether you're looking to explore your creativity or level up your skills for your current role or a future career step. I've been following along with some videos by AD Singh on video editing in DaVinci Resolve to try and improve the production quality of the videos that I make for you guys on YouTube. You might have seen the results of some of this learning in the intro to my most recent AOS 5 Bind and Fly launch video. Skillshare have been kind enough to offer the first thousand people to use the link in the video description, a one month free trial of Skillshare so that you can see how it works firsthand and decide if it's right for you. If Skillshare is of interest to you, there's a link down in the video description. If it's not, but you'd still like to support the channel, then I do have a Patreon and a Buy Me A Coffee there are links to those in the video description as well, and I really appreciate any support that you're able to send my way. That's all that I have for now. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.